guys, so uh, right now we're going to take a look at the female reproductive system with an eye towards fertilization and early development. So if we start over here, inferior, we've got the vagina, and here's the fornix on each side, making that little smile. The entranceway into the uterus is the cervix, and then we have the body and the fundus all making up the uterus proper. And from here you can see we have two fallopian tubes. We have one on the patient's right, we have one on the patient's left. And the fallopian tubes end in this expanded area called the infundibulum. And the infundibulum ends in these finger-like projections called the finimbri. And over here you can kind of get a sense that that infundibulum is kind of trumpet shaped and how the egg would get sucked up right into there. Now, speaking of eggs, we have an ovary here and then we have the other ovary right over here. So let's take a look at this from the standpoint of reproduction. So let's zoom in a minute and we can see we've had some sperm deposited in the female reproductive system here. It's in the vagina. It's act, the sperm are actually swimming upstream into the uterus here. Now, once they get here, the sperm have kind of two different ways they can go, right? They can go to the patient's left. They can go to the patient's right. Now, in the case of the sperm going this way, they're going to hit a dead end, and that's sort of going to be the end of them. But in this case, over here, for the sperm who decided to swim in this direction, they're going to swim the entire length of the fallopian tube, and they're going to get very lucky because look what happened over here. There's a ruptured follicle over here. Here's our mature follicle. It ruptured due to a surge of LH, right? Luteinizing hormone from the brain. Bam! We get ovulation. That egg was released and the wave-like motion of the finimbre swept that egg up into the infundibulum and it started its journey through the fallopian tube. And I don't know if you can see this over here, but do you see this piece of glue? Yeah, you guessed it. That used to be where the egg was. It fell off. So use your imaginoscopes for a moment and imagine there is a newly released ovum sitting right here. So here come the sperm, and they're going to go ahead and fertilize that ovum. Now, if that ovum is still in its newly released secondary oocyte phase, it's going to still have a diploid number of chromosomes, right? Diploid meaning normal number of chromosomes, so 46. That sperm pronucleus is going to have to basically cool its heels, cool its jets, sit up back on its heels and wait until that egg goes through its secondary meiosis, right? And we get the final polar body and then the 23 chromosome pronucleus of the egg. Then the sperm and egg pronucleus will join together to form a newly formed diploid nucleus. And this structure will now be called a zygote right? Because that's the name of our uh, fertilized egg when we're back to the normal 46 chromosomes. Now, our newly fertilized egg, let's walk over to this side, okay? While this has been going on in the fallopian tube, back at the ovary, that ruptured follicle has turned itself into a structure called the corpus luteum. So here we have the corpus luteum. It's busy churning out hormone, right? Progesterone, some estrogen, a little bit of inhibin, but primarily progesterone. It's signaling the uterus of the lining, or the lining of the uterus rather, to stay in place, keep getting bigger, okay? Meanwhile, our imagined zygote is going wee. It's journeying down the fallopian tube. Now, as it does this, it's undergoing cleavage, right? cleavage, rapid cell division, no growth. So boom, 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 right? From one egg, from one cell, to two, to four, to eight, to 16, 
to 32. Once we get to the 32 cell stage, a couple things happen here, right? First of all, it's now called a morula. Second of all, it's poised to enter the uterus. This took about three days, 72 hours, in order to make this journey. Now, at this stage, we're journeying into the uterus. We're becoming a hollow ball with a bunch of cells on one side. So, at this stage, we're going to be called a blastocyst. And here's an example of our blastocyst right here. Let me zoom in a little bit for you. All righty. Whoa, too much zoom. A little better. Okay. So our blastocyst consists of an inner cell mass surrounded by a layer of cells on the outside all the way around it with a hollow bubble of fluid. And that inner cell mass is now going to be called the embryo. So this is the first time we have the beginnings of an embryo here. The layer of cells surround it are going to be called the trophoblast. The trophoblast is going to become the extra embryonic membranes. So all four of them, chorion, amnion, yolk sac, allantoy, all forming from the trophoblast. Okay? So our trophoblast is going to go on a three-day journey, or rather, I should rephrase that, the trophoblast has been journeying, right? And from about the point it entered the uterus as a morula, three days later as a blastocyst, it's going to burrow its way into the lining of the uterus. Okay? This is called implantation. Okay? It's going to make itself a snug little home here. And it's going to take, mm, oh yeah, probably almost a week, somewhere between six and seven days, to go ahead and finish that process of implantation. Now, that's going to bring us up to almost 14 days, isn't it, from the point where we had this egg released to the point where we're at this blastocyst that's burrowed into the wall of the uterus here. So think about this for a minute. What important event takes place about 14 days after ovulation? Think about it. Okay. So if you're thinking to yourself, well, that's when the corpus luteum starts to degenerate, you would be absolutely right. So if there was no pregnancy, the corpus luteum would degenerate. It would degenerate into the corpus albicans and we would have menstruation occur when the hormones normally being produced by the corpus luteum stop being produced. So how do we prevent that from happening? What, do we, what is going on here? Ah, the very important event here is that the embryo is starting to produce HCG, right? Human chorionogonadotrophic hormone, HCG. So HCG is a chemical signal to the corpus luteum to say, no, hang around, wait, I need you. So it will hang around and produce hormone until the placenta forms. And that's gonna be a good three months in order for that to happen. Once that happens, the placenta will take over the job of secreting the hormone. The corpus luteum will degenerate into the corpus albicans. But until then, we've got this chemical loop going back and forth here. Now, of course, it's never quite as simple as that. It's always more complicated. And I'm just trying to give you a very simple overview here. So that is one of the main things that's going on right now. Okay. So there you have it. The whirlwind tour.